Well, hello there, and welcome back for more Advent of Code 2022. So, uh, yesterday I did a solution for this challenge, uh, day 12, uh, about climbing a hill. And, well, the solution works, but I'm not very happy with, uh, with a couple of things from that solution. And today I wanted to see if uh, we can improve them, those things somehow. I did record the video uh, for that so solve yesterday, but well, I don't know if I will upload it because <laughs> by the end of the video I wasn't thinking very clearly, I think, and I was being very fussy and I really couldn't focus and, you know, be effective uh, while coding. So I stopped the, the video there, but there are <laughs> there's quite a, a chunk of me not making much sense. But, you know, that's... Um, that's how it is sometimes, uh, you, you cannot always, or I'm, I'm talking about me, you know, I, I cannot always be uh, so focused on, on things. And I will blame that exclusively to lack of caffeine, but today I do have a bit of mate. And, well, even though it's almost 2 a.m., uh, I think I will have some mate at this time. I'm quite used to drinking caffeine, so I trust that this will, will not disrupt my sleep any more than it already is disrupted. So, okay, let's see, um, let's revisit what day 12 is about. It's basically about um, finding a path to climb a hill uh, from point S to E. Um, the, well, the rules are you can move uh, left, right, up, up or down. Um, and these letters represent the height of the different uh, squares on, on this grid. And you start, S is at height A, and E is at height Z, and you have to go from A to Z. Um, but the only rule is that you cannot go two heights <laughs> up in one step. So, for instance, if you are here, we can go to A, 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 and we cannot go from A to C here. We have to go first to B, then to C, and then we can go to this other C, then to D, and so on, and, and you can reach uh, the summit, uh, but only going one up. That's basically the rule. So let's check the solution that we came up with. Um, let's go to Advent of Code 2022. I have my cat under my, my laptop, and well, uh, she went away. Okay. Uh, let's fire up the text editor. Okay, so let's check the solution. There's a couple of, basically two things that I don't like about this. First of all, that it's kind of slow. If I run it, uh, let's do cargo run day 12, well, it's building first, and now it's running, and you can see that it took some time to run. And these are the, the answers, basically. What we are computing here is um, the shortest path distance and we can see the input for this this would be day 12 is basically a pretty big grid or height map uh, of this hill that we need to climb so we can actually measure how much it's taking if we do a cargo build and let's also do a build for release because this varies a lot between debug and release mode and if we time uh, this tar generated targets, see the debug, advent of code, the 12. Well, you can see that it takes some time to run and it's 1.8 seconds. Let's run it once more. Yeah, 1.8 1, 1. seconds, pretty consistent. It takes a bit longer to run while I'm recording, it seems. When I'm not recording, it's 1.6, so they are pretty close. And if we run the same thing, but in, um, in release mode, uh, this is admin code, blah, blah. You can see that release mode is actually much, much faster, basically 10 times faster. <laughs> it only takes uh, 180 milliseconds to run. And I guess it will be, well, that, there it was quite faster. And again, it, it hovers around that value. Um, but you know, it's not very uh, snappy or instance when I do the usual cargo run. And I would like to, I, I have a pretty great idea of why that is. So that's the main thing that I would, I would like to address today. 
And the second thing that I don't like about this solution is uh, on the parsing code. Um, we're basically parsing this thing into a to the vector or like to the grid, which will be a vector of vectors of u8 that is a byte uh, with height. But we have to also find the start and end points of this. So this, this would be this S and this E uh, among the other letters, letters and like, you know, have a couple of variables for, for that. So what I did is to have a, an optional start and end. And here for parsing the height map, we have a couple of nested maps, like uh, mapping each line and mapping each character or each byte within that line uh, to something. But just in the middle of the mapping function, we, we also, like if we find an S, capital S, we are assigning this start or the uh, end uh, variable if we have uh, a variable E. So this is like a mutable closure or a closure that's doing a side effect, you know, inside of a map function or in, inside of a nested map, map function. You know, and it's kind of ugly. Um, like it, it, this thing is trying to be like, uh, functional and pure code but it has a nasty side effect uh, stuck in the, in the middle there so yeah that's the other thing that uh, that is bothering bothering me about this solution and i think that seems like the easiest uh, part to start so let's see if we can do something about this so first of all i think this would actually read better if it was a purely like imperative kind of code, to be honest. Um, so we could have something like building the height map, you know, with two nested for loops. So let's do, let's try that and see how, how it looks. Let's have a mutable height map and initialize it with an empty vector. And let's, then let's do for, uh, a pair like this of the y coordinates on each line in inputs lines enumerates and we're gonna do basically what is inside of here of this map um, close in brackets this should be closing well, I have a mess of brackets here Let's remove this, let's remove that, save. Okay, so then each line we are also going to do, well, instead of you doing as bytes and iterator then, we can use actually use bytes, which returns an iterator. So we're gonna do the same, uh, same idea. So for each, uh, for each x coordinate and each character or bytes in, in line bytes enumerates, we're gonna do um, closing these brackets and this. Okay. Um, Yeah, and what did I miss a match or something here? What's in there? Ah, yes, this match I missed. So this match closes here, and here I need to close the uh, this bracket, I guess. Let's see. Okay, now it looks better. So, for each line, what do we do? Well, we are gonna collect into a row, I guess. Um, so let's say, let's row be a uh, vec. We can actually initialize it with some capacity. Uh, this would be line length, I think. Yes, in bytes, that's good. And we are going to 
push a character into this row. So um, hmm. could I actually do something like row push and do something like this and let's move the start and end thing is out of this um, out of this match so yeah now it looks a bit much more neat um, mm -hmm. Why don't you like this? Oh, pro probably because this is not mutable. So let's make it mutable. And then we can actually uh, push this row into the height map. Height map, push this row. Uh, okay. And, well, um, I guess one thing that we could do here uh, let's think. No, okay, this is this is fine. We could actually ask uh, separately if this uh, character is S. Uh, then we're gonna do this, and if this character uh, actually this should be a byte S. Is the byte uh, E? Let's do something similar like this. Okay, so this is one idea, and let's run and see if actually it gives the same results. Yes, it gives the same results, so the parsing is working just as it, as it did before. And I guess this, you know, this row is correctly being inferred to be a vector of u8, so I think we can even remove this uh, explicit type here, and it's still inferring the same type. So yeah, let's compare this side by side and see how it looks. Uh, it's basically the same code, you know, but it looks, to my eyes, this looks much more neater than, than this, <laughs> uh, this very nested thing. And it is a more imper imperative stuff, but I think I like it quite better. Yeah. So that's it. Actually, we can maybe move these two conditions to the top so that we have, you know, in the same order, we have start, end, and height map here, and we are doing the same thing checking for start, checking for end, and pushing into the height map row. Um, so, yeah, I think this is already an improvement of basically the same code that it was before, but expressed in another way. And again, I have another cat <laughs> behind my computer. Come on, cats. Um, all right, so yeah, I think this is already an improvement. Let's add this uh, ten tentative code. Um, but there is also another approach which I guess could work here, which would be to do things uh, in more of a stepwise um, manner. Like maybe we can first transform this input into like a 2D vector or a 2D grid of the characters that are already in this uh, string, then find the start and end in, in, in that uh, grid and then transform that grid into heights. Um, so, you know, that way... Oh, come on, cats, they, they are not collaborating today. Then. I don't know, I think that this is the time that they are very active. <laughs> okay, mm. so let's sketch that out to see. Um, yeah, let's try. Let's keep that code there for reference and to uh, steal things. But we could say um, the first thing that we are going to have is like a another map but this would just be the character so I guess we could call it the char map um, this would be 
vector of something and we could have um, let's see the input lines yeah and mapped into each line uh, as byte I guess and we can actually make it into a vector and collect that yeah just like that I think um, this is an equal sign here and char map is correctly inferred to be a vector of vectors of u8 so that's fine then uh, we can find within this char map uh, the positions of x uh, of the start and end so how would we do that um, it would be nice to have like um, uh, let's see if we say let's start the let's imagine that we have a function that gives us like map uh, points iterator and um, yeah uh, and I guess here we will have to pass something maybe the char map and that's too sure but let's suppose uh, that thing exists and we can find within that uh, and, and this would give us like an iterator over all, all the points in that map like 0, 0, 0, 1 and so on on the first line and then on the second line and come on cat come on <laughs> I think she's hunting a bug or something um, so yes uh, let's say let's imagine that this exists and then uh, we can code it so we're gonna find the point um, where the char map at that point is s yes I guess uh, byte s and expect there to be something so we should be able to extract this expectation from here and have uh, something very similar to for the end but compare with the e uh, bytes to have an end position and here we should need to have this and well then we we have to see how to to uh, map this char map into like the height map um, can we have a shorter error uh, expectation message uh, you can say start position not found and position not found okay so let's try to sketch out this map points iterator so how are we going to do that uh, woof, look at this uh, ugly thing <laughs> I guess we can be taking a reference we can keep this thing being a reference to this thing and we can maybe then uh, have a type alias for this thing so what should we return here mm, I guess we can have something like let's uh, the height of this map be char map length and let's width be something similar but let's grab the first element and the length and have an iterator from zero to the height then for each of these things, uh, for each of these coordinates, we can do a flat map 
this would be the y coordinates and we can have then uh, the x coordinates being uh, iterated so like this I guess so we're gonna map x and then have x y I think I think I need some curly braces here and I also need some curly braces here I think and I think well no those curly braces were not needed <laughs> yeah okay so a closure can just be denoted with um, pipes here and then an expression that's very nice I think here we can say that this should be an implementation of iterator uh, where the items are uh, points right well maybe what's the problem here um, <laughs> that cannot be indexed by u size um, I guess here you are getting references to your size but I guess um, what's the problem there uh, closure may leave the current function but it borrows width which is owned by the current function oh yes okay it's borrowing this uh, width that lives inside of this function so I guess we can move have some move closures here uh, that one and I guess this one has a similar yes it's the same thing but with the y so move here for things like uh, these u sizes uh, is basically going to mean copy those things so that's good and I wonder why oh, okay here this, these things are references because the find um, function on iterators gives you references so I guess we could uh, be reference here and that should be it yes uh, good yeah that's nice I would like to see this on a single line so um, let's see if we can would you like an empty expectation? No, it doesn't like to. It seems to be too long for the Rust uh, for matter to be a single line. Yeah, it wants it to, to have. Uh, I don't like when, <laughs> when that thing happens. Like start and end, I, I would like to, um, to see them side, side by side, you know? But okay, this is fine. And let's actually keep those expectation messages, I guess. Good. Um, okay, so we have found the start and end positions, and now we have to basically do this mapping that we uh, did before from this char map to a uh, height map. How do we do that? Well, I guess one idea could be to use this iterator once again. So we could use a for xy in uh, map points iterator of this uh, turn up um, and we can assign to this charm up yx um, and here we do a similar thing that that we did over here mm -hmm. here we should be matching well the same thing Come on, cats. I think my cat typed this card. <laughs> uh, and we are full of errors. What are we... Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay, let's uh, actually extract this into a variable. And 
call this variable, of course, character, because it's a char map. And this char map is not mutable, so I guess we have to make it mutable. Or I guess we could start with a height map. Yeah, that could be uh, another another idea. Um, so let's see. We can perfect all this, but would this work actually? Let's uh, return this char map here instead of the height map. And let's well, comment this out, it shouldn't be needed, and see if this still works. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. That's very neat. So, um, this code then is equivalent to what we were doing before. And this is basically, you know, in my opinion, a, a little bit... Is there something here that I still need? It is a bit more um, modular, I guess. We are basically parsing here into a convenient data structure. Then here we are finding the characters that we care about, the S and the E. And here we are doing this mapping. Um, which is very good, I think. Uh, let's see. Is there something else that we could improve here? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Um, let's think. I guess one idea uh, we could try here, like since we already know, like here we have the start and the end, we could actually replace these positions in the char map with A and Z respectively. And then here the mapping would be only this condition, basically. Uh, which would make it a little bit... Um, yeah, a little bit more clear, I think. Let's sketch that out, maybe. I guess here we could... Uh, this structure into a... Tuple and here also ex and ey. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, char map starts y and starts x. These are very good variables names. I know. <laughs> uh, let's put the byte a and then same idea, but with the end. Let's put the character z. And what is this? This is the u size. Why are you complaining? Um, no. Okay. And then here, I guess we just need to do this. You know, no match needed. So look at that. And here, I guess we can remake this thing, sx and y, and, and x and ey. Look at that cryptic uh, two variable letters, <laughs> but, uh, two letter variable names, I mean. And would you be okay with this? Yeah, even with that. Look at that. <laughs> Um, I actually kind of like this. If, yeah, this actually doesn't look that bad. Um, one thing that I think might uh, we might improve. Um, but yeah, I think this this code actually, you know, it, it's a bit more compact and does one thing at a, at a time. I, I sort of like this. Uh, still works the same, so I was wondering if maybe this width and height we can um, move out of here and just pass in to this function the width and height because we are not doing anything with the contents of this map that we receive here, we're just taking its dimensions. 
Um, so maybe another idea would be to move this up here. Well, before doing this, I quite like this code better than what we had before. So let's uh, add it and let's actually compare it side by side to the um, sort of, uh, I don't know how to call this, the, the, the previous version that we had like a functional looking code of two maps and then doing side effects to this. Uh, yeah, this is more imperative kind of stuff, but it, it's a nice mix, I guess. Uh, or it's actually not very imperative. We're just parsing here and we're finding stuff here and then we are modifying uh, to what we want. So I guess uh, that's not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's good. Um, we could also, um, what I was trying before, let's move this width and height over here. Yes, and we could, I guess, take these uh, parameters from here. So width would be a U size and height would be a U size. Uh -huh. So here we're going to pass width and height. Yes. And okay, uh, I think this function became much simpler. And well, there is a bit of, there is something here that I'm not entirely a fan of, which is making this charm map mutable. So another idea could be to not have it mutable have it only be the char map as it is called, uh, but then let's make a height map, and this is going to be mutable. So mutable height map, which is going to be a vector of uh, vector. Come on, cats! <laughs> now the two cats are <laughs> are behind my computer. They they don't fit here. So come on, one of you has has to go, and it was Simona. All right, <laughs> so we're going to make a vector of vectors of um, what? Of um, just zeros. And the internal vectors are going to have a width, and the external ones are going to be of size height. And now mm -hmm, we can iterate over here and say that the height map f adds y x is going to be this charm map. Come on, cats, come on. <laughs> we are going to reintroduce this match. And let's see. We are going to do something like we were doing before, actually. So if it was the uh, character start, then it's going to be zero. If it was the end, it's going to be 25. And if it is anything else, any other character, we're just going to do this thing. We're assuming that it's uh, from A to Z, and that's it. How about this? Um, let's test it if it works. Nope. <laughs> I screwed up, panicked with there should be a path from start to end. Oof, I really screwed it. Oh, I guess because we are not returning the height map, we are returning the char map. So let's return the height map. Let's run again. And there it goes. And I guess this shouldn't, uh, if we build in cargo build in release, uh, 
and we time it. Yes, this shouldn't add any really real like uh, runtime. You know, it should be ne negligible uh, when compared to the cost of doing lots of uh, pathfinding algorithms. So, okay, let's compare this, uh, let's say, final uh, iterative solution over what we had before. And yeah, so we have first a chapter map, then we find the start and end. And hmm, actually, we are not now not using this uh, start and end. Sx and x, sy. So let's actually call these things start and end. I guess. Yes, much better. Uh, it still should. Uh, run the same way. Yes, it does. Again, let's compare. Yeah, I like this code much, much better. So it's doing probably more work than, than it was doing like at runtime, but you know, optimizers are, are pretty pretty sophisticated, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if this whole of this gets pretty optimized away. Um, like for instance here we are looping twice over all the points to find this start and end, but you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, if these two, like we could manually fold these two loops uh, into one, but you know, if it's not important, like uh, who cares? Um, and yeah, then we are like, we are just parsing into an intermediate data structure, then directly finding the start and the end, and then directly constructing the height map from that intermediate data structure. So yeah, I, I like this much, much better than what we had before. So this is a nice, uh, it should be a nice commit. So let's say improve uh, parsing of uh, height map and start and end positions on day 12. Very good. Uh, actually, the grammar was not very good. <laughs> Let's amend height map, comma, start and end positions on the. Uh, okay, yes, good. So, what else? Then there is the performance issue, <laughs> which is the, the largest issue that uh, I wanted to fix. So basically what I did yesterday was to reuse a distra algorithm uh, that I had coded for last year's uh, advent of code. So we can see it here. Uh, this is the distress algorithm. Um, I never know how to pronounce this name or some, something like it. Uh, I think it is the Dijkstra's algorithm, which is actually not really computing the shortest path. So it, it's uh, not a very good name here. It's actually computing the shortest path cost, uh, like the cost of the shortest path, but it's not returning the shortest path. It's just returning the cost. So maybe, you know, this should be called shortest path cost. Um, but well, I did, uh, Copy paste this from last year, uh, last year's advent of code solution, and I didn't really bother to see if you know it was a good fit or not. Uh, so the first thing that we are doing is computing this thing, uh, shortest path cost, um, from the start to the end positions marked on the uh, on this grid. But then the part two uh, asks uh, asks us to uh, do the same, but you know, compute the, the cost of going from any A on, on like any point uh, that will be an A that, that is a point that is at, at height zero to the summit and see which, which one is the shortest. So uh, let's see how many A's are here. 
uh, I have to move my face around. So the uh, 677 A's. So we are doing the short, uh, shortest path computation for, well, almost 700 uh, times. When really, when you do this kind of um, algorithm, you are computing the costs, or here I, I call it distances, for most of the, uh, or at least for, for a lot of, of points. So you're doing a lot of uh, duplicated uh, computation for this. And we are basically trying uh, for anything that it has height zero. Here, actually, this nested for loop, we can probably um, replace it with our new iterator function. Um, we are comp computing this shortest path again, and you know, discarding any inter like computations of the distances uh, that we did before. So I think we could probably do this in a much better way. I was actually checking out the uh, distrust algorithm Distrust. Man, typing this. Yes, this thing. Distrust algorithm on Wikipedia. And there is uh, some pseudocode for this. Uh, usually, the implementation returns um, an array of, or I guess, a collection of the distances uh, for any given point or for any given node on a graph because this is uh, told in terms of graphs and also the for any point which would be the previous point to form that path but we are not interested in actually uh, computing the paths so we can ignore that um, and yes and this takes a, a graph and one single source like from where to start and you know it will compute the the distances to all the connected uh, points in the graph we're not doing that, we're taking a start uh, and an end point. And whenever we find the end, we short circuit and return that cost, you know. Um, so that's, um, I think we can probably um, modify this algorithm to, instead of short circuiting out, you know, start from a given position not care about the end. Uh, by the way, this function takes a start and an end, and also a function uh, called successors that will take a node and give you like the neighbors or successors of that um, uh, position. So uh, that's what we are using in here in the in this auxiliary function called also short path. We are uh, well doing a bunch of stuff, but calling this with start end and this neighbors that takes a point or a reference to a point and gives you an iterator over which points you can go from there like climbing up with the rules of the um, of the of the puzzle of day 12's puzzle so um, I was thinking what we want to try is to start from you know find any point starting at height zero but another way of expressing that is, you know, we can compute the shortest path from start to end, but we can also it would be equivalent to go from end to the start, like from the summit to uh, to the start where we are. Uh, if we do, you know, the logic for the neighbors in in the other way, instead of in, instead of saying to which points I can climb up to, is from which points I could have climbed from. Um, and starting by the end, and then we can, you know, extend and do the distress algorithm, like the full thing as described in, on the Wikipedia page, uh, to go from that summit position to all of the nodes on, or, or to all the, of the points on the grid, and calculate all of the costs, and then, you know, do it only once, and then we can use that result for both part one and part two. So I think that was a mouthful of an explanation. I, I don't know if I made a lot of sense, but it's more or less clear in my head. <laughs> so uh, let's try it out. So the first thing that I would try to do is to actually see if it makes sense to invert the positions here. Instead of doing 
start and end, let's do the shortest, shortest part, uh, path from end to start. And the neighbors, we have to invert the logic here to say, okay, what are the neighbors? If we go um, like from end to the start, we have to, this thing is basically doing for any point, it's taking all the directions like left, right, uh, up and down and uh, mapping them, like adding them to X and to that point X and Y, then checking if it is out of bounds. And then here's the logic that the interesting part um, is taking the night neighbor uh, height. Actually, this, uh, these variables could probably be renamed. We could call this uh, nx and ny to signify that they are the neighbors x and neighbor y. And the x, y from here, you know, we, we are not sh shadowing those variables. And okay, to say if we can climb up to that, we are asking if the neighbor height is at most, so less than or equal to our current height. So I think if we want to ask the other way around, uh, to say, can we climb up to this? It should be, I think, the same logic, but asked the other way around. So if the current height that we are evaluating is less than or equal to this uh, neighbor height, uh, yeah. So can I, can I have uh, climbed up from this neighbor height? Well, if this plus one is, um, yes, greater than or equal. Yeah, I think this, this should give us the same answer as before. So let's see if we run, run this. Uh, was this <laughs> the same? I think it was. Yes, it, it is the same answer as we had before. So that's good, but this allows us to maybe remove this um, end position, which is the, the actual like, start position, and um, yeah, do the like the full extra thing. So instead of calling this thing shortest path cost, uh, we can call it um, shortest path costs. Maybe <laughs> call it unoriginally. So this is going to, instead of returning a single uh, option of use size, we're going to basically return this uh, intermediate uh, hash map here. So it will be a hash map of uh, points. So this is going to be this type parameter t to use size. By the way, I think uh, another thing that I didn't do yesterday is to see if this uh, function, you know, was uh, well adapted to uh, our problem here. I just copy pasted it and I think I, I could, today I could uh, do that, you know, to maybe specialize it for, for this purpose. But I think before doing that, I want to think it, about it in, in, in abstract terms here in, in the algorithm to think of like any possible type of node and, you know, be very generic uh, to think about like the distrust algorithm instead of like thinking about our uh, specific problem even though thinking about our specific problem would be an overall e uh, simple solution um, you know I, I don't want to I, I think I find it clear to like think very algorithmically here and very general and then specialize it uh, for our case instead of like putting here uh, things related to height maps or like vectors of 2D or whatever. Here we don't even know about uh, how things are stored in uh, our solution, uh, like this 2D vector. Uh, we just care about having a start position and a successors function that takes up any point and gives us any, you know, all the successors. So yeah, we should also be generic in the return type. So this would be hash map from uh, any of those points to the cost of, you know, the distance from that point, or I guess from the start to that point, if that makes sense. And we are not going to take an end. 
Okay, so basically it's going to be everything I think is going to be the same. And the unvisited, it starts with a start, which makes sense. And then we are going to just simply return the distances. I think we could probably call these distances costs, but uh, we can think about that later. So yes, I think um, yes, if a previous computation was less than this, uh, is fine. I want to sort of remember how this thing works. And we are taking any successors. So I guess uh, I have to think about well what this returns, but we could actually probably see. Um, let's go to this thing, uh, but paste the sample uh, input, which is much simpler. And we can do, what we can do is to, um, let's ignore this thing for now. And, uh, well, uh, actually, let's call this thing, um, well, we're not going to have the shortest path. Um, Let's just call this function shortest path. Yeah, passing what we have right here. Let's comment the other thing. And here, let's call this thing, well, as we said, starting with the end. And having this neighbors function, let's assign this to a variable called distances, okay, let's not return anything here, and let's just print to see what we get, print a len, and we're gonna uh, debug prints, and let's debug pretty prints these distances. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, we also have this, which we can ignore and just return an empty string into. Very good. And we, what are we missing here? Semicolon. Right, we got something. And uh, well, this pretty print is not the prettiest, I think. Let's uh, not pretty print it. Let's print it like this. Okay, so what did we get? Um, actually, we could also print. Um, print ln so distance from start uh, we're gonna print distances indexed at the start because this should be a hash map from points to uh, distances to, to integers basically so distance from start is 31, which I think, yeah, it is what the, um, the example has. And then there is another distance that we uh, consider that is 29. If we don't start from 0, 0, uh, but we start from uh, here, which I guess uh, this should be uh, x0 and y. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's actually print that also from 
zero four. So from zero four, uh, this doesn't like it. Maybe passing a reference. Do you like it? Okay. It's twenty nine. Very good. And I'm not sure if this actually return like what this returns for like I guess for any path that don't connect to uh, you know for any point that doesn't have a possible path to the end um, to this end yes um, this won't return anything uh, we could actually do something like, well, actually, we don't know because we are not going to reach that neighbor at any point. So yeah, okay, that, that's fine. So, well, let's try to see if we can work with this. Um, <clears throat> so I guess we can even try to inline this kind of thing into what we were doing before inline this oh wow well, we, we can probably call this uh, calculate distances or something like that uh, But it doesn't need the start. Okay, yeah. And let's return this thing. Well, we're gonna return the hash map of uh, what was it point to u size of course import this thing and um, we don't need the start here let's distances be this okay and for part one Let's actually keep well these uh, long variable names. The shortest path from the start would be let uh, shortest path from start be distances indexed at start, I guess. And this doesn't like it because uh, expected the reference but got a value type okay that's fine and what are we going to do now hmm well we could actually use our handy iterator that we used before I think so shortest mid, uh, this is this is this, and then we have a code like like this, where we initialize this to to this, and then <clears throat> we can keep something similar, and but say for x and y in uh, map point iterator <coughs> and we need some width and height <coughs> so I guess we can use it here but actually if we have all those distances we can go the other way around I guess yes and we won't even need to hash Yes, 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 yes. Let's say, let's keep this uh, mouthful of a name, shortest path from any bottommost point, but we will, have, we will have the distances and we're gonna iterate over them. 
yes. And we are gonna filter. So what are we iterating over? We have the keys and the values. The keys are the uh, points. Uh, let's say point and distance. I think. <laughs> Um, and we want to filter the ones which I guess we can also destructure this point and say x, y we want to filter the ones that are at height uh, 0 so we want to say something like this yes and from that, we just get the minimum, I think. And does that make any sense? Uh, here, I guess, y is a reference. So, okay, let's uh, dereference and dereference. And we have to expect this. Uh, well, I don't know what to put in this expectation message. And this is, I guess, yeah, we are filtering. And we just, we just want to keep the, um, the distance. So we're going to map uh, to We're gonna ignore that x, y. We're gonna keep the distance. So we're gonna map to the distance and we're gonna get the minimum of that. What am I missing here? A parenthesis, yes. Okay, we're not using the distance, so let's ignore it like this. What about node? Release, okay. Uh, release is... Yeah, it's finding the correct answers for the sample input, so let's use the full input. And compile and run again. And look at that, it didn't take... <laughs> that didn't take much time. Let's run it in debug mode. Okay, let's time it. Uh, if we run in release mode now... Ah, look at that! <laughs> 13 milliseconds, that's very good. And we, if we run in debug mode, yes, it's taking no time now. Before it was taking 1.8 seconds and now it's just 35 milliseconds and we are getting the same answers. Yes, very, very good. Um, and we even got to, yes, um, it's, it's actually a pretty, I think a pretty readable solution. Um, yes, here we're getting the distances from points that are at height zero. That's very good. And yeah. <laughs> I guess we can... Um, let's actually see... We can express the same thing I want to compare uh, what, what is more readable. We can ex express the same thing, I think, in terms of our iterator of uh, map points iterator. We would need the width and height uh, here. Let's uh, assume that we have this here, height map. And we're gonna do basically the same thing, but we're gonna filter these x and y's and to well um, things that are at height zero. Yes, again we need to be reference here. That's fine. And then we are going to map uh, those x and y to the height map, uh, no, to the distances. Actually, we can say simply uh, points here. 
the distances at that point. Uh, yes. And I guess uh, this could be uh, this could be non-existent. So I guess we could use get, and this returns an option. So get at this point. What are you complaining about? Uh, I guess we could take a reference here. Yes. And instead of map, this would be a filter map. We want to ignore uh, points at height zero that don't have uh, a distance to to the end. And then just also get the minimum and that. So that would be I think should be the same thing as before. Actually, let's do a cargo run 12. Yes, still the same answer. So let's see which one reads better. Um, here we're using our iterator again. We do need the height uh, and width variables again. So this is not actually shorter than this. This also needs this. Uh, let's move this here where we need it. We will need them. Um, but it's, I guess, more, you know, the logic here is a bit more simple, I guess. But, well, we would, we need more, you know, hashing to get this. I'm actually, I'm actually good with this. So, yeah, expect uh, there should be a point at height uh, zero that uh, reaches the end. Sure. Very good. I think that's very, very nice. And can we do something else um, to improve this? I think this is already like a huge improvement from what we had before because it just runs uh, much, much faster. So this is great, actually. Um, should this path? Well, actually, this uh, this comment now is no. Should this path uh, costs starting from a, a given node, I guess, using this just algorithm? Yes. Why not? Um. Actually, one thing that doesn't make much sense to use here is to have this um, into iterator thing that um, returns a node and a cost to that node because um, we are always using a cost of one uh, in our example. So I guess we can just say this. And not do this. And the successor cost, assume it is one. Yes. Uh, sure. And here. We have to, we don't need the last map here. We just, we can just uh, map to the neighbor's points. That's better. And let's see, these are not like, uh, these are the neighbors. I would like to find a better name for this. So these are like um, points where like I could have kind climbed from uh, because we are 
starting from the end that's uh, that's the the tricky parts um, oh look at that here we do have the width and height so if we, actually if we inline this function uh, we can probably keep the the other version of this you know that wouldn't be too bad let's actually copy this mm -hmm. <laughs> let's keep it for now but you know I I'm wondering what would happen if we inline this thing actually can we ask it to inline to all color colors Ooh, that is not the <laughs> uh, not the prettiest inlining uh, we can take this out of here we can uh, move this here. Yes, okay. Um, this should be uh, I named this thing height and, height, uh, height and width because uh, not to confuse the heights on the height map itself. So let's uh, actually follow that convention over here and uh, over here. Yes, um, it suddenly became a bit too too long. But that's fine. We also, we still keep the the other version of this, which should have the same message. Uh, we can choose from either. And what else? Uh, what is the error now? Mm -hmm. Oh, we're still mapping this. We don't need that map. Uh, yeah, we need a reference to this. And I think that's almost it. Uh, to implement blah, blah blah. What is the problem now? Implements fn once, not fn. Uh, ah, yes, it moves the variable height map into yeah. So this is a problem that I faced uh, yesterday also. If we have this uh, closure, it's going to be taking, um, like it's going to move height map as it's using height map in the, uh, uh, internally. Uh, it will be close over height map and it's going to take ownership of that. And height map is a vector of vectors. So it's going to try to move uh, height map into that. So it's only going to be able to call once. But the distress algorithm needs to call it multiple times, so it cannot be fn once. Uh, so what I saw that is kind of a hack for this is to, you know, you can put this inside of a anonymous block and say let's uh, height map be a reference to height map. So that closure only sees that, I think. Oh no, but here it doesn't live uh, long enough. So I guess we can put it outside. Uh, we are shadowing this. But yeah, now it doesn't complain. Uh, we do have, yeah. Let's see if it still runs. It does. Very good. We don't need this import. Very good. And 
now that we have this, well, this syntax error here. Um, how do we prefer to do this? Um, like this or like this? It's just a matter of um, of preference, but I guess. Um, hmm. I guess I actually prefer this version where we're just iterating the distances. Um, let's name this ignored variable point simply. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very good. We could even call this thing like underscore to ignore it <laughs> more thoroughly. Uh, but I actually prefer to have some name for the ignore thing to know what we are ignoring. Um, so yeah, we have this to we have the calculation of the distances, and we can probably wrap this thing up. Mm, so let's see. Yes, I like this. Here we're doing the balance checking and trying to see if there is anything else uh, I would like to improve or like <laughs> bike shit about this code, I should say. I would like to maybe comment this, uh, take a reference so that's uh, closure doesn't take ownership of uh, the height map back. And actually, let's put this comment in here. And this, I would like again, I would like uh, a nice name for this or actually to like document this trick. Um, trick. Or it's not a trick, it's actually like a legit algorithm, I guess. So, it's, you know, there's nothing uh, hacky about this, I think. Note, uh, we calculate um, all distances Um, starting from the end uh, point, uh, so we can reuse this result for both part one and two. Yes, and um, Enables this uh, this is basically like come from points, which points uh, we can we could have come from, um, or like previous points we could say you know, um, but well neighbors is kind of a Mm, this closure or this function returns the points uh, from we <laughs> my cats are running around and uh, we could have come from because uh, we are calculating distances starting from the end points. And maybe a, a bit of a redundant explanation. Mm. 
Yeah, but it's nice. Yes. Uh, could have. I guess this could be the node, and we can ignore this one. Yeah. All right. Um, I think I am quite happy with that. Uh, oh, actually, yes, this thing about the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's do something, something more here. I want to use this idea of anonymous blocks. Uh, we can use it to put this uh, hide map reference and the neighbors a function inside of this block for the calculation of the distances. Uh, very good. Very, very good. Doesn't take ownership of the height map back rates. I guess we can just say of the vector. Uh, yeah, very good. So the distances are calculated this way. And then we have, like, we, do, we don't need a function for uh, an external function for this. I guess even the height map height and width could be moved into here. But well, we can keep that as part of the. Um, if we were using the, the iterator here, I guess we could um, keep it there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we could actually put it here. And look at that. Look at that nestedness thing. Uh, yeah. Actually, this is better could have come from, no need to be so emph uh, emphasized so much. Yeah, yeah, at this point, uh, I, I'm just nitpicking and bike sharing this code. So I am good with this, I think. Um, we are using this map points uh, iterator only in this uh, parsing function, but that's okay. And yeah. Let's take a look at the changes that we did. So this code is now uh, a bit shorter and much more local, so I like that. And well, the best point is that it's just way more performance, like tens of times better or, or, or more, I don't know. <laughs> like, let's do uh, another comparison to have an idea. Release and time in debug mode. Like there's, you know, uh, it's even no no comparison. Before it was one point eight uh, seconds, and and now it's just you know the time that it takes to run. Like any day uh, takes something like that to run. Uh, well, maybe a bit less, but it's not much different. Look at that, like seventy one. Like this is just noise, you know, at this point. Um, maybe not so much noise, but you know, it's, it's very low numbers. Um, and I guess in release, yes, release, it's even it's even faster. So that's great. Uh, yeah, let's do a commit. Uh, it commits. So yes, performance. Uh, well. Improve performance of day 12 solution uh, by computing the distances to the end point uh, from any point in the map. I could put all the distances uh, to the endpoints uh, at 
once we avoid having to run distress algorithm multiple times for each uh, multiple times for each uh, point at height zero which drastically improves uh, the runtime performance. Before, um, the uh, debug build uh, is to take one point. I, I will mention, well, yeah, I can. It doesn't really matter the difference. Seconds, while now uh, it takes around, I don't know, 50 milliseconds, like it doesn't really matter. Uh, and the release build took uh, around 180 milliseconds. While now it takes uh, around 20 or 10 or 20 milliseconds, which is just uh, in the order of random <laughs> uh, random noise uh, of any run. Yeah, <laughs> uh, random noise, or just in the order of any other daily solution. Very good. So yeah, let's um, let's commit this, and I think we are done. Uh, I'm very glad that we found. Uh, a solution to to make this way more performant than before. Now I can again do cargo run and in debug and get uh, snappy output of all the days without having to wait, uh, you know, a significant time. And why didn't I commit this? Actually, didn't I commit that thing? Yes. But what, why are you showing this? Oh, okay, it was just VS Code being derpy, I guess. Um, yeah, very nice. And I guess instead of uh, short path costs, I think I would call this thing uh, distances. Um, because we are referring to this as distances internally here, and we are also referring to those things as distances here. So it doesn't doesn't make sense to to call it cost uh, at another points. Well, I guess internally here we also call it calling it cost plus distances Starting from a given node, uh, using this algorithm, blah blah. So, let's call it something like this. And the Let's not refer to to distance if we are not using uh, to cost if you are not using that name. So compare distances in the end. yeah okay. Uh, sure. Let's not rename this. Uh, yes. All right.
parts. Yes, let's name th this thing distances and not have confusing uh, two, two competing names for the same concept. Uh, so that's good. Let's actually add these changes and whoops. And I meant into the previous commit. All right, so I think that's it for, for today. I'm glad that we could improve the performance by quite a great margin. And that's also the parsing. Um, you know, we could improve the situation on the parsing too. So yeah, uh, I now I want to continue on with, uh, with the next puzzle, but it's pretty late now, so I should be getting to bed. So if you have been, thanks very much for watching and see you next time. Bye bye. Oops, I confused the, the shortcuts. Bye bye now. <laughs>